Hi, and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to be looking at energy. We're doing a big focus on how energy is generated and the kind of energy resources that are available to us. Now, if I was to ask you, if we have this torch here, where does it get its power from? You'd likely say a battery. And the answer would be absolutely correct. You'd get that from a battery. But if we were to take this same question and then apply it to your house, where you take a switch, you flick it, and then suddenly a light turns on, where does the power come in that situation? So that's what we're going to be focusing on this lesson, which is how exactly does the energy get produced in a whole country? Because we understand in small scale, but when you think of whole cities, how do they produce their energy? Now, there's very different types of energy. We have coal, natural gas, nuclear, hydroelectric, non-renewables, renewables, oil, gas, and others. But what's interesting is that of those, about 86% is what we call thermal power. So the question now is, what is thermal power? Thermal power is a really remarkable and quite simple way of producing power and is very, very smart. What will happen is they'll have an energy source. In this case, we're looking at oil, nuclear, coal, or gas, and they'll use it to boil the water. Now, when you boil the water, what comes out of it? Steam. So they're essentially just trying to create steam. Now this steam is pumped into the next chamber, which has got these massive turbines. So the steam has been pumped into these next chambers, and those chambers pushing the turbines cause them to spin. The third chamber, you'll find that there is an axle, which from the second chamber, leads into essentially just a generator. And a generator, simply put, would be copper wire and just magnets. As the turbine begins to turn, they spin the axle, and that causes electricity. And the reason this produces energy is because any time you can rotate copper wire around a magnet, you produce energy. What will also happen is they will recycle some of this water. So it's actually quite efficient. So essentially, as the water boils, the steam produced, it goes into the turbines and it's recycled back in. Now, this third chamber, which contains the generator, it's actually very similar to just a simple DC motor. You've got copper wire and magnets. If you were to connect leads to the end of this motor and rotate that axle, if those leads are connected to a light bulb, it will turn the light bulb on. And there are experiments with this, where you can see. So essentially, anything that can turn that axle will produce power. Thermal energy uses steam that they produce by heating up water using oil, coal, nuclear, or gas. So essentially, we have an interesting little equation here. Any kind of mechanical force, so it can be anything, it can be the wind pushing it, it can be steam, it can be a river. If it can result in the axle of a motor to spin, then you've got power. Here is an example of a nuclear power plant. On the left, you'll say there's a containment building and they have uranium fuel, so this is a nuclear plant and they have steam generated. So they're using that uranium fuel to heat water to produce steam. They flow through steam pipes into turbines. These turbines spin, which move the axle, and that goes into the generator. And inside that generator, you've got copper wire and magnets, and as they spin, they produce a charge. That goes through the transformer, and that produces electricity. So this is an example of thermal energy. So let's look at an example. For instance, you can use a river. As the river flows, it begins to fill each of these slices, these triangle slices. They become heavy and then they move down. We don't know what's in the building based on this picture, but we can understand and make a very accurate guess. Inside that building, there's a rod which is, goes from the wheel into the building and that, building, that rod has copper wire around it and there's magnets around that copper wire. So as it spins, it produces electricity. Put that through a transformer and you've got yourself electricity. So this would be described as hydropower. This is what a diagram of hydropower would look like. So they have a reservoir which is elevated, so that produces pressure. It flows down and you can see there's a turbine there. The water causes the turbine to spin, which moves an axle. That axle has copper wire around it, there's magnets around it. So as they rotate the copper wire around the magnets, it produces electricity, goes through the transformer, the transformer makes electricity that way. 
So incredible how there's just the infinite ways that you can make power simply by exploiting this one method. Now another really clever way is called geothermal power. So thermal power fueled by the earth. So instead of using coal, oil, nuclear or gas to heat up water to cause steam, what if you use the earth to create that steam? So this one, they have the earth itself heating up water, which produces that steam, and that steam goes to the turbines, and those turbines spin the axle, and that axle then in the generator will move the copper wire around the magnets, and then you've got power after it goes to the transformer. So there's clever ways like geothermal power. Another way of producing energy is called biomass. This is a renewable energy from plants and animals. So what will happen is a lot of energy in plants. These plants will absorb the energy from the sun through a process known as photosynthesis. If you burn those plants, it will release chemical energy. And we can use that to power factories and power and run cities. Now it's quite a nice cycle here. So trees take up the carbon dioxide, that's why they call them carbon soakers, and they release oxygen. We take them, cut them down, put them to a power plant, we burn them, releasing carbon, that carbon then goes back into the new trees and the cycle continues. So this way we can actually work in a really healthy system where we can use the plants that can produce us energy and it can help them in the long run as well. Now let's look at energy resources. Because when we're talking about energy resources, it's very important to think about two things. Is it renewable or non-renewable? So a renewable resource is one that can repair and rebuild itself. Non-renewable is energy resource that does not repair or rebuild itself. Starting with oil, a lot of the times when you go to fill up a car, you'll often find that the symbol of that petrol station is a dinosaur. So Sinclair is a common example, where you can find the mascot of Sinclair is a dinosaur. In the film Cars, for instance, the fuel company is provided by a company called Dynico. The reason for that is because it comes from dinosaurs, hence the term fossil fuels. So if you think about it, our cars run on dinosaurs. Now the next energy resource we'll be looking at is nuclear. So nuclear is a little tricky because most of the uranium in the world is actually found in Australia. So 29% of the world's available uranium is found in Australia. The process to extract it and then transform it into a usable compound is very tricky. You need open cut mines, you need a stockpile to crush it, you need to add water, you make it thicker, then you have to leach it, then you have to stick it again, then put it through a sand filter, then a solvent extraction, then you have precipitation tanks, you have a thickener, you use centrifuge, you dry it, you put it into drums and then you put it through market. So it's a really in-depth process. But the uranium itself is actually quite rare, it can't rebuild itself. So if you use up the uranium, the end product can't be reused, so it's non-renewable. Next you have coal. If we understood petrol as being essentially dinosaurs that were crushed through heat and pressure, along with the dinosaurs were plants. So if fossilized animals from a long, long time ago squished down into petrol, we will understand that as simply gas, like oil. When it's trees that get compressed with heat and pressure, it becomes coal. So again, that's why they're called fossil fuels. With time, pressure and heat, a tree will eventually be compressed into the point where it becomes coal. And here's a picture of a coal mine. So they're trying to extract this coal, which a long, long time ago was just the trees that were just around absorbing carbon and giving out oxygen. Next, we're looking at gas. Now, along with the oil that's being produced by these animals that were squished through heat, pressure, and time, there were also pockets of gas that were produced. So here we can see that while there's oil, there are little gas reserves, and we can actually use those as well. So when we say gas, it's just simply a byproduct of what's being pushed out from the oil. Next, we're gonna be looking at solar energy. Now this one is probably quite common, many of you probably have it on your houses. Solar energy uses sunlight, converts it directly into DC power, and then they can use that to produce energy to run a house, to run a street, run street lamps. 
and it's becoming more and more common. There are entire fields in Africa dedicated to solar energy. So they call those solar farms. Now this is a really useful one because if you think about it, the odds of us having problems with a lack of sunlight is quite rare. You can just always find Africa, they always have an abundance of sunlight. Why not use it to produce power? And finally, we're going to be looking at wind power. Now, wind energy, they have a gear in the center, and they use wind currents in order to spin these big turbine propellers, and then that turbine propellers will move an axle, and that axle will then move the copper wire and the magnets, and that produces energy. So it's very similar to how energy is produced as we understand it, but it's using wind, which is not harmful, it's not an, there's an abundance of it, it can't run out. So this is a renewable system as well. Now the ultimate wish is for perpetual energy, achieved through what's known as perpetual motion. If there was a certain device where you could push one thing, so you could just start it going, and it would run itself, you would be able to solve a lot of the world's energy needs because you just build these systems. They would require no additional resources and they just run forever, perpetually. The perpetual motion machine shown now was actually made by Leonardo da Vinci. This one is cool, it has a ramp, and that ramp ensures that one side, in this case, our right side, is always shorter. So as it pushes in, it becomes heavier on the left, and it becomes more of a down drag on the left, causing it to go on and on and on. This one uses the assistance of a pendulum and a ball bearing to keep that motion going on and on and on. Now this was developed in India. It uses ball bearings to cause one side to be heavier, which causes it to continually rotate. This one is quite interesting because it uses magnets to cause a repelling and attracting force. So you can cause it to come towards you, and then you can move it away so it keeps that momentum going. So these are incredible ideas in terms of how you can develop perpetual energy. But there's a problem. Why you see all these images and they look really cool and you've got videos of them working seemingly by themselves, they're all fake. Off camera, they'll typically have something which causes it to move. Maybe they'll have a hidden motor here, they'll put a battery in a certain spot, or like in this one, they'll just have an air compressor off screen and that will be what moves it over and over and over and over, and they'll just keep that off camera. So these systems don't actually work. And there is a video in the link in the description that will show a video explaining exactly how and why these don't work. Now, of course, you can use animals to produce energy. For example, here is a one horsepower motor used as a log splitter. I hope you enjoyed that lesson. We set out to explain how power, how energy is being generated. We looked at gen energy resources, and I think we did a pretty good job. I think we can confidently say that we've covered all of that. If you like what you saw, please support the channel by clicking subscribe. And if you want me to cover other lessons in the future, just leave them in the comments. And thanks for watching.